Uh, thank you. It's an honor to be asked uh, to speak in front of you all. Uh, first, just a quick piece of business. Do we get to keep these pads? <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be huge. <laughs> and uh, not that I'm going to, but what do you reckon they'll get on eBay? <laughs> I'm not going to say I'm going to. I'm just it's yeah. pure curiosity. Uh, I, uh, I, uh, I'm not as eloquent as uh, Mr. Shapiro. I sort of speak in uh, beats and um, off the top of my head. And I've written a few uh, down for you all today. Uh, first off, I come from a, a very blue-collar background. I grew up in uh, North Hollywood, California. Uh, my dad was a, a school teacher, and my mom received uh, welfare and food stamps and uh, told me very importantly when I was young, when I asked her if she would get a job, she said, and lose my welfare benefits, no thank you, that, which uh, taught me a very valuable lesson, which was uh, never to listen to my mom. <laughs> All right. Uh, I ended up being a carpenter and then a, a boxing instructor and met Jimmy Kimmel when I taught him to box for a uh, morning zoo stunt and eventually made my way onto uh, TV and radio. Uh, in the early days of my career, I toured the country with Dr. Drew when we were on Loveline together, a syndicated radio program also on MTV, and we must have played a hundred college campuses with uh, nary a word of negativity and no safe spaces and no stuffed animals being handed out, simply went there, said our piece, many controversial ideas were exchanged and that's just what they were, exchanged and then we got our paychecks and went home and 15 years later I went out with uh, Dennis Prager, conservative talk show host, and attempted to do a show at uh, Cal State Northridge, where my mother was a actual graduate from with a Chicano Studies degree, believe it or not. So she's rolling in dough about now. <laughs> uh, and uh, they pulled the plug on it. They gave us no good reason why we couldn't speak there, and we actually had to get attorneys involved to go back and speak at a later date. Um, we're talking a lot about the kids, and I think they're just that, kids. We are the adults, and I don't think we are doing the children. I mean, these are 18 and 19-year-old kids that are at these college campuses. They grew up dipped in Purell, playing soccer games where they never kept score and watching Wah Wah Wubsy, and we're asking them to be mature. We need the adults to start being the adults. Um, studies have shown that if you take people and you put them in a zero-gravity environment, like astronauts, they lose muscle mass, they lose bone density. We're taking these kids in the name of protection, we're putting them in a zero-gravity environment, and they're losing muscle mass and bone density. They need to live in a world that has gravity. When you, you need to expose your children to germs and dirt in the environment to build up their immune system. Our plan is put them in a bubble, keep them away from everything, and somehow they'll come out stronger when they emerge from the bubble. Well, that's not happening. Children are the future, but we are the present, and we're the adults, and we need to act like it. And I feel that um, what's going on on these campuses is a, we need law and order, we need to bring back law and order, but I think if we just had order, we wouldn't need law. So could we just bring back order and could the faculty and administration on these campuses act like faculty and administration and most importantly, adults who are in charge of these kids who need some gravity in their life?